M. Night Shyamalan is a weird guy. Whether you love him or hate him, you can't deny that the guy makes movies that look and feel distinctly him, regardless of their quality. You also can't deny the zany anime plot of a career the man has had, because name one other director that started off with an absolute bang, delivering what many consider to be a film classic, and then slowly and progressively get funnier and stupider as their career goes on. I mean, this is a man who managed to get some of the best child and Bruce Willis performances, and some of the worst child and Bruce Willis performances, all under the same god-tier umbrella that is known as Messiah Knight Shyamalan's career. Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate M. Knight. in fact quite the opposite, because no matter what film I watch from him, I always get some kind of entertainment value from them, whether they be entertaining because they're actually well-made and well-coordinated films, or because they're the most hilariously incompetent so bad it's good dumpster fires, there is at least always something in Shyamalan's films that merit a watch regardless of their level of quality. I will always be amused and awe-inspired by whatever Shyamalan makes, well, at least that's what I thought, until I saw his latest film, Knock at the Cabin. Or should I say, knock me out, I don't want to stay at this cabin because it's fucking bad. Ahem, <laughs> let me explain. Now going in, I wasn't really sure what to expect, because when you look at his past like four films, they all range in various quality. Split was a movie I quite enjoyed, The Visit was a movie I just could not fucking stand, and Old was a return to form for M. Night in terms of making hilariously stupid comedies in the same vein as The Happening and Last Airbender. These are all very different movies in terms of quality, so going in I went in with an open mind while also keeping my expectations fairly low, and so after seeing the film, I can honestly say that this movie somehow failed at meeting my my incredibly low, open-minded bar, as I thought this movie was just an absolute failure. Granted, while this was not as insufferable or cringe as The Visit, this was nowhere near the level of entertainment of Split, nor was it nowhere near the level of comedy and hilarity that was old. Instead, Knock of the Cabin sits in this weird state of boring, meandering, draining pile of nothing, which is honestly the most shocking thing about this movie more than anything. Because regardless of how you feel about Shyamalan's films, you can describe them as a lot of things. Hilarious, tense, stupid, passionate, whatever but two words that I never thought to describe an M. Night movie are boring and repetitive because those are the exact adjectives to best sum up my feelings about Knock at the Cabin. I did not care about a single thing that happened in this entire movie because the film just runs through the same repetitive scenario of the home invaders lecturing about the apocalypse, they kill off one of their own, some random fucking flashback about the gay couple who are the main characters in the film, and then the cycle just repeats over and over and over again. For a film that is an hour and 40 minutes long, the premise of this movie just felt so stretched out as I was constantly checking my watch, wondering when the fuck is A, the movie going to be over, or B, something of substance actually going to happen. And the way the film was directed is just so fucking obnoxious. The film, for whatever reason, chooses to do all these close-ups of the characters' faces at random moments throughout the film, and this directorial choice doesn't really add to anything other than making the framing of these scenes just so awkward to watch. It's as if Shyamalan watched Uncut Gems or any other Safdie Brothers film and just screamed, Ooh, ooh, I can do that. I want to do that in my movie. I want to copy that without realizing A, why the Safdie shot their films in that way in the first place, and two, fully commit to this gimmick in the first place. Because if the point of Shyamalan directing these scenes and having all these close ups is to supposedly create a sense of claustrophobia and tension, then he really did a shit job at that because not only does he not fully commit to this gimmick as it's just randomly dispersed throughout the movie, but I instead feel the opposite of what Shyamalan wants me to feel. Every time Dave Batista or Wen's face gets super close, Close up. I just burst out laughing because it's not scary or intense, it's just awkward and vapid, and I guess those are also good adjectives to describe Knock at the Cabin. This film has just so little going on and so goddamn repetitive that it felt like I was watching nothing. It felt like I was watching a shitty slasher movie that just had nothing else to offer other than terrible acting and a deranged maniac running around killing people, but at least these slasher movies have a lot of fun gore and violence that make up for their dumbassery, which is something that is just absolutely lacking in Knock at the Cabin. Now I should preface that I'm not the type of guy to just immediately like a movie because it has lots of violence and brutality, what I care about is how the violence is showcased and what is being communicated by showing such violence. A Clockwork Orange, my favorite movie of all time, is a perfect example of this because it showcases a lot of raw and intense moments of violence, whether it be gang fights or home invasions, while also using these moments to communicate its themes about oppressive government and free will. Showcasing the violence and all its ugliness is vital for the film to communicate its thematic ideas because if it nerfed the brutality, then the impact of the movie's message wouldn't feel the same. And this is 
is my biggest issue with Knock at the Cabin. It is constantly nerfing its deaths and in the process undermining its own themes and messages. The film constantly insists on a world-ending doom that can only be prevented by the family sacrificing one of their own, and it is constantly trying to give some weight and impact to the deaths of all these home invaders that kill themselves whenever the family refuses to do what they say, but it just comes off as incredibly hypocritical and confusing when the movie is constantly cutting away from these fucking deaths. Throughout the film, whenever the main characters refuse to decide who they want to sacrifice, the home invaders do this weird ritual where they hack each other to bits one by one, and while in premise that sounds scary and interesting, it's just constantly being undercut by the camera panning away and all these shitty editing choices where they cut before the impact is made. I don't feel any tension or stress whenever Ron Weasley or the girl from I'm Thinking of Ending Things are begging for their lives, pleading the main characters to make a choice and then cut away from their actual deaths. This is the opposite thing to do when paying off a buildup of suspense or just building suspense in general, and they do this for the actual doomsday sequences as well, where despite the news channel telling us about massive floods and diseases that take away millions of lives, we don't see a single person actually die from this result. If the film had actually dug deeper into this level of devastation and unveiled real consequences and harm as a result of these choices, then I would actually have felt fear and tension and would have kept me interested. But the movie instead decides to puss out and just tell us all this bullshit happening instead of showing us. Like, how on earth can the movie honestly expect me to have some level of fear and tension when the movie doesn't even have the fucking decency or balls to actually show these deaths? How can the film honestly expect me to empathize with the main characters when the film doesn't even bother showing the consequences of their decisions to not participate or act? You would think that in an R-rated horror thriller movie that we would, hmm, I don't know, have actual stakes and real deaths instead of doing this PG-13 creepypasta for babies nonsense? It's so fucking infuriating. And the worst part is that I could forgive all of this if the film had actually something interesting to say, if it had an actual engaging narrative that could hook me in, but the film fails to do even that. Rather than telling us a story that allows us to think for ourselves and come to our own conclusions about what we saw, the film treats us like we're fucking five-year-olds by not only straight up telling us what and how to feel through the really manipulative use of music and the painfully unsubtle writing, but just leaving absolutely nothing up to interpretation and making everything as airtight and conclusive as possible. This is the complete opposite of what I want from a psychological horror thriller, and judging from what I read about the source material, it seems like the book actually is more in line with not only just what I want out of a narrative like this, but also offers a scarier, more intense story than this stupid, cowardly adaptation has to offer. Now, keep in mind that I have not read the book, and what I'm saying is purely based off of what I researched online, but from what I understand, not only is the book much more ambiguous with its ending in terms of whether the home invaders were telling the truth about the apocalypse, supposedly it puts the characters in actual dark and morally complex circumstances that leave lasting consequences. For example, in the book, after Ron Weasley is killed off, Andrew manages to escape early to get his gun, and in the scuffle with the home invaders, a stray bullet accidentally kills Wen. Leonard explains that her death doesn't count as a sacrifice, and eventually after the rest of the story happens, Sabrina is the one that kills Leonard and tells them that they still have time to save the planet before killing herself, and while Eric offers to sacrifice himself as he comes to believe the home invaders, Eric says no and that he's unwilling to cave to the demands of a god who wouldn't accept Gwen's death as enough of a sacrifice and the two drive away together. The novel's ending is ambiguous, leaving readers to decide whether the apocalypse was real or the reported disasters were simply coincidental, and as someone who hasn't read the book, that sounds like a fantastic way to end this story. Based on what I've researched about the book, it seems like the narrative really benefits from ambiguity and leaving the audience constantly questioning whether what the home invaders are saying is true or if it's all just delusional nonsense. But in the film, M. Night literally just went, subtlety? What's that? Fuck that. Let's just do everything completely black and white with no wiggle room for interpretation whatsoever because I don't like thinking in my R-rated psychological thriller. At the end of M. Night's version where all the shit happens and Wen doesn't die and Leonard is the one who kills himself and lets them do what they must, Eric persuades Andrew to shoot him so that he and Wen can live a happy future. And if you ignore the fact that yet again the movie decides to puss out and just fucking cut away from the death instead of actually showing it, this would have been a pretty interesting way to end the film. Because if the movie had just ended right after Eric's death and Andrew and Wen are the ones driving away, not exactly sure whether they really did stop the apocalypse or if they were just gaslit into killing their loved ones due to a series of horrifying coincidences. But instead of doing that, you know, the logical way to end the film, M. Night just couldn't fucking help himself because the movie just keeps going and reveals that not only did Wen and Andrew really did stop the apocalypse, but when they look through all their stuff, it's revealed that all the stuff about the home invaders, like Adrian having a 
kid and Sabrina really being a nurse was in fact true. Subtlety? What's that? Clearly not a thing that actually exists because if it did, it would have been in this stupid embarrassment of a movie. Why give the movie any rewatchability when they can just have a clear-cut happy ending where everything all wraps up nicely and we can all go home to never think about this piece of shit again? Who even needs ambiguity interpretation when we can just straight up say that the home invaders are the four horsemen of the fucking apocalypse? Who cares, right? Because M9 has once again made some fucking masterpiece and has never screwed up once ever. <sighs> Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to end it here because I'm going to have a heart attack if I keep going. If you enjoy the movie, more power to you. Apparently, I'm in the minority with this film as a majority of the people just seem to absolutely fucking love it. So don't let me discourage you from enjoying the movie. And to give it some credit, I guess it's less shitty than all these Shyamalan films, I guess. But there's just so much wasted potential, so much incompetency that could have been fixed if M. Night just approached certain scenes differently. And just so much boringness and repetitiveness that I just got no enjoyment out of this. I did not have a good time watching this and I have no real incentive to ever watch this film again because if the movie just lived even a tiny thing up to interpretation I would have some small reason to rewatch this but as of right now why in the hell would I ever sit through this again if you want to see a much better version of this film I highly recommend you check out it comes at night directed by Trey Edward Schultz it's basically this film but just a hundred times smarter and more interesting and more open to interpretation leading to more of a reason to rewatch and talk about the movie but as for knock at the cabin though this was a boring non nonsensical repetitive film that will leave my brain the moment I upload this video. I'm giving this film a 3 out of 10, thank you and goodbye.